back to Einstein's Eyes, John and I's YouTube channel, where we take a closer look at all things eye health. Today, we're going to talk about a condition that can have a major impact on your eyesight and overall well-being, giant cell arteritis, or GCA. <clears throat> what is giant cell arteritis? Giant cell arteritis is inflammation of the blood vessels, often affecting the arteries in your temples, here or here. It usually occurs in people over 50. Some believe it's Scandinavians are more susceptible. Women are more susceptible as well and can lead to serious complications like vision loss if not treated in time. This can be an emergency. So it's a big deal. The good news is we're going to break it down in simple terms right now so you can understand it. So <clears throat> I'm a neuro-ophthalmologist and oculoplastic surgeon, and I deal with giant cell a lot. So let's start with the basics. So GCA symptoms can include headaches, scalp tenderness. It can hurt to comb your hair, jaw tenderness. So if you're chewing, it can really, you can have a lot of pain in your jaw and your mandible and sudden vision changes. Now you can have stuttering vision or you can have blackout of one eye and then the other eye can go too within 24 hours. So one of the big worries in giant cell that can lead to sudden blindness of one or both if you're untreated. That's why we do worry about it. So that's why getting a diagnosis quickly is important. It is important if you're experiencing any of those symptoms. Now, I will say that something called polymyalgia rheumatica, PMR, is an inflammatory disorder <clears throat> involving pain and stiffness in your shoulders, sometimes the hips. And people with PMR are at increased risk for GCI or giant cell arteritis. PMR can also occur after severe infections or the use of high doses of antibiotics. We don't really understand it, but that's the association. <clears throat> so before John dives in, I'm gonna say, how do we diagnose GCA? So if you're an ophthalmologist or optometrist or internist, suspects GCA, what do they do? They order lab tests. They order something called an erythrocyte sedimentation rate or an ESR, and that measures inflammation in your body. That's number one. Number two, a C-reactive protein or a CRP. <clears throat> That's another marker of inflammation, and that can confirm if there's an inflammatory process going on. And number three, the platelet count. So elevated platelets are associated with giant cell arteritis. Uh, so those are the lab tests. Now, the gold standard is actually a biopsy of the temporal artery. So you take a biopsy up here. And what I do is usually I'll shave a little hair. Uh, you don't have to with me, <laughs> but you shave a little hair. You do a biopsy. And, you know, with experience, you get pretty good at it. it usually takes 15, 20 minutes and you close up. So here's a picture of what a temporal artery biopsy looks like. Uh, it's between the lateral brow and the ear. You make a small incision, we close it up. I use dissolvable stitches. And within a few weeks, you can barely see the incision. Now I will say that complications can occur. It's usually bleeding. So we ask patients if they can to stop their anticoagulants or their aspirin. And what are the treatment options? Well, when it comes to treatment, steroids have been the gold standard forever. Prednisone is often the first line of defense. And it works really well at reducing inflammation quickly. But like all medications, and the longer we're in medicine, John and I will tell you, there's always trade-offs. So high doses of steroids can cause side effects. So weight gain, increased blood sugar, bone thinning is really rough. And you have to consider this when you're suspecting giant cell. That's why I generally recommend a temporal artery biopsy. Now there's a newer option, tocilizumab, <clears throat> which is a drug that is, we call a biologic drug. And that targets a specific part of the immune system to help reduce inflammation. It's a great option for people who really can't take steroids or have trouble with the steroid side effects. This drug though is expensive. And it's a big deal for patients uh, if their insurance can't cover it. There's also increased risk of infection since it does suppress the immune system. So it may not be for everyone. The other 
a thing you have to remember, though, and this is why tocilizumab is considered, is that when you're on steroids, you can be on it for months. I mean, six months is not unusual, sometimes even years. Uh, so that's why it's a potential option. <clears throat> so the, the key takeaway, and we're gonna, this is going to be a short one, is that there is treatment for GCA, for giant slaughteritis, but it needs to be individualized. You need to find someone who's experienced, uh, an ophthalmologist and an internist or a rheumatologist, immunologist that has experience with this because the consequences can be devastating. Now, when I was a fellow in Pittsburgh back in 93, 94 with Jack Kennerdell <clears throat> at Allegheny General, I actually saw a patient go blind in 24 hours and it was devastating. So it's a real thing. The final thoughts are giant cell arteritis can be scary and and it 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 is scary. But if you have an early diagnosis, you get proper treatment, people do really well. So hi, I'm John Ditkoff. I'm in northern New Jersey. Uh, I'm a general ophthalmologist, so I've also seen my share of this serious condition. I think a couple of things I would add. I first of all, that was great. I, I learned some things as well. Um, Number one, I think if you're if you're a doctor out there watching our video, it's really important you have a high index of suspicion. Uh, I've unfortunately seen patients that did lose vision from temporal arteritis who were not diagnosed in time. They went to a doctor, they had this vague jaw pain. Or, so there are patients that have had issues other than these problems. So they don't always have the headache or the jaw pain or the temporal sided pain where, for example, there was a woman that came with a branch retinal lottery occlusion. That's a small stroke to a small blood vessel in the retina. Her vision was fine. She came in with vague symptoms, saw a very well-respected doctor who sent her to a medical doctor. The medical doctor did a full workup for strokes, didn't do the testing that Carl mentioned, didn't do the SED rate and the C-reactive protein. And guess what? 10 days later, they lost the vision in that eye. And then when they did the set rate C reactive program, they saw it was extremely high. So if they had checked it right at that moment, they would have put the patient on treatment and that would have prevented that problem. Um, temporal arteritis also can affect your neurological system. So people not only can lose vision, they could have strokes in their brain. They can even die from the condition. So it's a pretty serious condition, but the key is high index of suspicion, get person on treatment. Now, prednisone, unfortunately doesn't always work. Now, I guess the question I have for you, Carl, is, I mean, in my experience, if you get people on it right away, the majority of the patients have done fine, like Carl said. I have seen patients lose vision in one eye, even on the, th the therapy. Do you know much about the newer medication? Is that, does it work no. better or is it just less toxic or is it that you don't have to use it as long? Yeah, so I, I've been using prednisone and to be honest with you, I'm the guy that they send to get the biopsy. Yeah. And then I send them back to the rheumatologist who usually manages this. Right. Um, and so in the last few years, uh, particularly as I've I've gotten away from neuro-ophthalmology and focused purely on ocular plastics, I do I don't do management anymore. I do the biopsy. Perfect. And and that's that's I'm sort of a boutique yeah. guy now. I, I always refer back to the rheumatologist and the treatment, but as you know. Back in the old days in Einstein, we did everything. We yeah. we used to do the biopsy ourselves in the clinic. We would uh, we did the sed rates, John. Remember we that? We did the sed rate ourselves. We would spin it in a, in a little thing to do with stat. So we'd have an, we'd have a result within I don't know an hour, probably yeah. less, right? So we now, did the sed rate. Yeah, remember those little I it, Yeah, I, I tend to send patients either to their doctor, and if the doctor is not available, to an emergency room for the stat blood work, and then I you know I basically want the patient to be evaluated by rheumatology, general surgery to do the biopsy. Um, so really our role as ophthalmologists has, has changed. I mean, now we want to just have a high index suspicion and get them in the right hands. You widen the scope of, of the talk a bit and I appreciate that. But yeah, so giant cell arteritis can affect other uh, organs in the body because you know blood it's vessels right. go to those That's organs. Right. I mean, you, it can affect your heart, it can affect you know other organs too. So it, it is, it's really an important disease to recognize and to treat early. Uh, John, that was great. You know, the other name for temporal arteritis, for, uh, for giant cell arteritis is temporal arteritis. Right, so you right. might hear cool of that as well. Yeah, yeah, very good. Okay, thank you everyone for being here. If you found this interesting, please share this. Uh, please like and subscribe, and we will see you on the next video. Okay.
Thanks.